Hey everybody, son of a Mitch here with you, hanging out with Maxwell Carlisle, um, shredding guitarist extraordinaire, um, bodybuilder professional, um, and I guess the list just keeps going on and on. How you doing tonight, man? <laughs> Great, dude. How about you, man? Uh, can't complain. Can't complain at all. Glad the weekend's here. And, yeah, uh, sure. It's definitely a pleasure to have you on the radio here. Thank and, you. Uh, so this is the first time I've met you, and... You know, I've been following your career since uh, for about a year and a half now. Like, really, cool. you know, enjoyed what you've been putting out, and uh, so I've been checking out your web page. And usually, people don't put things on a web page unless it happens for a reason. So, right. um, talks about um, muscle fetishes and so on <laughs> and so forth. All right, that's so, that's your first question, right? That's out my of first page. question. <laughs> Little icebreaker. Okay. All right. Well, so. You know, as people may or may not know, I'm a competitive bodybuilder, and I've been doing that for a long time. And within the culture of competitive bodybuilding, uh, there are some strange <laughs> habits or whatever, you know, that people get into. So one of the things is there are some people, men or women, doesn't matter, who, you know, are really into muscular people. Okay, and they're not they're not muscular themselves. They just have a perhaps unhealthy interest. Like myself. Okay. Well <laughs> <Not>. <laughs> But so so the issue is sometimes bodybuilders will get approached by these people and for various things. Sometimes it's like they want you to come to their house and like pose for them and that kind of stuff. There's some stuff, I mean, again, this is the first question and we're getting into the weird stuff, so like uh, sometimes there are guys who want to be like dominated by female bodybuilders and this kind of stuff. So it's like, hey, come over and beat me up, you know, and like that kind of stuff. So anyway, the reason I have that on my website is it's like, please don't contact me for these things. Is you know, I do sometimes get people contact me for that kind of stuff, and it's just like a whole another world, you know, that I that I don't really want to get into. So okay. that's right. that's what that's about, you know. All right. But I don't want to, you know. Right out of the gate, I don't want to say that you know all the whole bodybuilding world is like that because it's not like that at all. It's a small, you know, small minority. Right, right. And like I said, I was just asking that more for icebreaker <laughs> purposes than anything. You know, I didn't mean to like put you on the spot. Uh, uh, so, like, speaking of the bodybuilding and your website, I saw that you're on a hiatus right now from the competitive yeah. piece. Right. Um, you have an idea when you're planning on going back or? Ah, man, that's a great question. I mean, realistically, the earliest it would be would be this next year, mm -hmm. um, maybe in the summertime, something like that. But there's so much going on. The reason I'm on a hiatus is just I have so much going on in terms of recording and touring and that kind of stuff. And it's like when you're, you know, I, I've competed many times, so it's it, I don't have like this, like, oh, man, I got to go do it, you know. So it's like the timing has to be right for me. Right. for me to want to do it because you have to kind of, you know, you have to simplify your life and maybe cut out things that are taking up too much of your time and that kind of thing to really dedicate yourself a hundred percent. So it's, yeah, I mean, it would have to be at a time where I'm able to kind of scale back my schedule a bit. And right now that's just, that's just not realistic. You know? Right. Right. Yeah. And that's, I see, uh, you have the tour coming up with Hellion here pretty soon. Um, yes. I believe that starts in October if memory serves. Yeah, October 2nd. Okay, and uh, so you're going to be out on the road, and I saw on your uh, on the Twitter that uh, Simon says the tour bus is good and everything. But, uh, is <laughs> I there... haven't seen it yet. But, Go ahead. Yeah. I haven't seen the oh. tour bus yet, but okay. they tell me it's great. You know, that, that could mean anything, though. So. <laughs> but uh, how are you going to stay in shape when you're on the road? Um, That's a great question. I actually um, I did a, a benefit with Ann... Uh, and Scott Warren from Hellion earlier this year, and uh, Chris Broderick was at the benefit playing also, and it was a um, you know against human trafficking benefit, actually really good cause. Anyway, so I talked. To, Chris Broderick is you know he's also a fitness enthusiast and stuff. So I actually talked to him about that. I'm like, dude, you know when you're on these long long tours with Megadeth, you know how do you keep in shape? And he had some. Some interesting tips. He does cardio in like stairwells at the hotels. Oh wow! Like going up down the stairs in the hotels and stuff like that. But no, as far as me personally, 
um, you know, depending on the schedule, we do have some off days in there. So I can, you know, I can look up where the closest gym is and that kind of thing and, and go to the gym. Also, you know, we'll be, you know, sometimes we'll be on the bus and sometimes we'll be in hotels and things like that. So sometimes the hotels have like a small gym and that kind of thing. Realistically, though, it's like get in the best shape I can leading up to the tour. And then it's like I just try to maintain that. You know, like I'm not, you know, I'm not expecting to be like, oh, yeah, man, my bench press is going to go up 100 pounds on this tour. You know, it's like it's it's nothing like that, you know, but it's but it's yeah, there's there's ways to do it, you know, and, and a big part of it is, you know, you can't be, you know, as as disappointing as this is to people, you can't be having the beer and pizza after the show like every night, you know, because that combined with maybe not having ideal workouts will will take a toll on you for sure. Right. They yeah. end up looking like me, <laughs> <laughs> but no, that's I mean, because that's just that's always like interested me, believe mm-hmm. it or not. You know, just like you see some fit individuals. I know George Lynch, you know, historically right. has been, and it just makes me wonder, like, with that type of regimen, and you know, I know when I travel, like, I eat even worse than I eat at home, you know what I mean? Right. And I just would imagine that to be such a challenge, you know. Yeah, it's it's a bad you know it's a bad thing in that the uh, the simplest and most convenient food is often the most unhealthiest you know right. so it's it's like you know you know you you don't have like a salad bar on your bus or something like that or or the equivalent you know so it's it's a challenge you know I'm I'm bringing tubs of protein powder with me and all kinds of stuff and the other guys you know they're worried about their equipment you know and I'm and I'm like oh how much protein can I bring with me you know. Right. Well, good luck. I hope it yeah. hope it Thank works you. out yeah. for you. I seen some of the places you uh, you guys are playing here on this tour, and uh, I know quite a few of them have some good grubs. So just stay away from the <laughs> kitchens. <laughs> I'll do my best, you know. But uh, anyway, so with this uh, with this tour, um, you guys are touring for New Hellion. I guess it's considered a mini LP or an EP. Um, yeah, I, I could I call it an EP. An EP. You know? Yeah, okay. it's five five songs. All right, and it's uh, it's the name of it is Karma's a bitch. Yeah. And uh, so um, what was the creative process for this? I mean, did it did it start um, just with the vocalist, or like, did you guys all sit down, or like, how did that work? Yeah. Well, basically, what it was, I guess, it kind of started mostly with me and Ann, um, because right when I joined the band, you know. She had, I think she had been wanting to kind of get the band going again for some time. And she had tried to get in touch with some of the former members of the, you know, former lineups and things like that. Mm-hmm. They weren't available for various reasons. Some of those guys have just kind of completely gotten out of the music business. So, uh, you know, long story short, you know, she and I got in touch. And one of the first things she asked me is if I was comfortable collaborating on writing, you know. Right. And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I love I love writing metal tunes, you know. So um, I just, you know, she kind of, we, she and I talked about, like, the sound she was going for and what she was wanting to accomplish. And so I just started coming up with riffs, you know, and ideas and d- making little demos and things like that that I would send them to her. She would bounce stuff back to me and like, okay, this part's cool, this part, you know, too happy sounding. That's 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 typically, like, the complaint she has. And she's like, no, it's got to sound meaner. It's got to sound more evil, you know. So, um, yeah, so we worked on stuff that way. Then once we got enough solid ideas together that way, then uh, she and I and Simon and Bjorn, uh, we all got into a rehearsal studio and started jamming those ideas out and, and really nailing down the structure of the song and making any little changes that we wanted to do. Then once we got that done in the rehearsal studio, then we went into the recording studio. And then she actually, I believe she wrote most of the vocals in the studio. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that was kind of, that was done a little bit, you know, a little bit later in the process. And then Scott Warren came in and did, you know, some killer keyboard work. Nice. nice. Yes. And uh, in regards to your um, your most recent solo album um, yeah. from last year, how was, uh, how was the response? Was you pleased with the response you received? Um, with the promotion, Full Metal Thunder? Yeah, I, I've been, overall, I've been pleased with it. You know, it's, the kind of stuff I do is kind of a love or hate thing. Right. 
you know, so, um, but, you know, I got quite a few reviews, you know, and obviously they're, they're places that review that type of music, you know, um, and, but I mean, all the reviews I got were really good, you know, and, and the people who it's been selling and, you know, people dig the tunes and, you know, the crowd response to the live shows we've done has been really good. So, I mean, overall, I've been really happy with it. I love the cover, you know, and, um, yeah, no, I, I think it's a good, I think it's a good musical statement where it, it kind of, it's a very clear statement about what I'm about musically. You know, I feel it represents my artistic vision well, you know. Great. No, I mean, yeah. I could definitely say, like, what I've heard of your style, you know what I mean, through the years, I mean, you are definitely, like, true metal, like, true triumphant epic metal, you know. And <laughs> Thank you, man. I love that. And I appreciate I mean, it. Like in some ways, it's it's awesome to see someone that's younger that you know still carries that torch without being. I don't mean to be cheesy, but it's no, dude. To I see totally, that. yeah, I, I totally hear you, man. You know, because like I'm here in uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and if I'm gonna listen to that kind of music or go see that type of band here. Like honestly, it's gonna be a fifty-year-old bald guy on stage. Right. You know what I mean? Like, you know, yeah. that, I mean, it just. Like, so it's just nice to see that you carry, you know, you're carrying it on there. Um, do you ever see yourself moving to any other genres of rock or anything like that? Or, uh, that's a good question. I mean, uh, I, I don't see myself certainly not in the immediate future, mm -hmm. but, but I mean, you know, I'm a musician in general, so I'm not with a few exceptions. I'm not you know, totally against any particular style. I mean, there's some things that I just would be, you know, not bother with, you know, but, um, yeah, I mean, but no, as far as the immediate future, I mean, all the stuff I'm writing in my head, the ideas I'm coming up with, you know, it's all about, you know, marching into battle and carrying the torch and that kind of thing. And that, and that's what I like to see as a fan, you know, right. but, but those are the kind of bands that, that I want to go see, you know, live. So I saw, um, Man of War finally did a U.S. tour recently, and I got to see them live for the first time. You know, I've been like a fan of the band for a long time, but of course they never play in the U.S., right? Right. So I finally got to see them live, and it was like, man, they, you know, they lived up to the hype. You know, it was like it was so loud; it would like the the wind from the speakers would like push you back. You know, it was it was awesome. You know? yeah. So no, that's the kind of stuff I like to see as a fan. So. That's the stuff I'm gonna produce as an artist. Right. No, that's. I mean, that's awesome. Um, after the Hellion tour here, uh, what is up next for you? I've been working on. It, it's I. I mean, I've got a thing finished that I'm just kind of waiting to release uh, with my my solo band, and that's. Um, it's called Visions of Speed and Thunder. It's a full length, sort of a compilation album. Because the thing that happened was, you know, I was looking back at my releases. You know, I've got two EPs with different singers. I've got an instrumental full-length album. I've got another vocal album that was like my first solo album. Um, and they're, they're similar, but at the same time different, you know. So I felt like if, if somebody goes out and buys one of my CDs, they're getting something, but they're not getting a full picture of what I'm doing. Right. So, you know, basically what I did was I took like two or three songs from every release and remixed and remastered them completely. So it's a very consistent, it's a very consistent sounding production on the album. And then there's two new tracks, two brand new tracks on there too. Cool. And it's, you know, it's all packaged together and uh, killer cover artwork. And uh, yeah, so that's Visions of Speed and Thunder. It's finished already, but I've been working on some distribution deals and things like that. And it should come out uh, towards the beginning of November. So basically right after the Hellion tour. All right. Yeah. Look forward to hearing that. Definitely. Definitely have you playing on Adrenaline 101 radio. So. Right on, man. Um, oh, I see some of your equipment back there. Um, yeah. Some good looking stuff. Um, how many guitars you own? <laughs> uh, you know, I, I haven't counted recently, but um, it's, you know, a lot. 
<laughs> no, it's, you know, I mean, my thing is I'm, I'm like, okay, well, I need, you know, I, I play in some different tunings. You know, I play some stuff is standard. Some stuff uh, is like half step down. Some stuff is a full step down. I'm like, so I need at least one guitar for each of those tunings. And then, of course, I need, I need a backup guitar for each of those tunings. Right. And then sometimes you don't want to use a Floyd. You know, sometimes you want a stop tail. So, of course, I need like, uh, you know, guitars with stop tails and maybe a different scale length on the neck. Right. And, of course, the color. You can't have, <laughs> they can't all be the same color, you know. Yes. So uh, there's always ways to justify getting another guitar. And that's, I, I want to admit, I want to say this publicly. I, I admit I may have a slight problem with this, <laughs> but it's something I'm working on. And I did sell one recently, so, uh, you know. <laughs> what was the occasion on that? <laughs> <laughs> but, no, that's, I mean, if you can do it, that's awesome. You know, I know <laughs> you, I've known you've been quoted to saying, uh, the more frets, the better, you know. Oh, but... yeah. Oh, dude, I, I've got, um, I have a, uh, I, I don't have, it's in the, it's in a case, but uh, I've got a Washburn EC-29, which is um, in like late 80s, early 90s, Washburn brought out these extended scale guitars. They did a 29 fret, which is the one I've got, oh, wow. and a 36 fret, which um, Ethan Brosh, I believe, has one of those, but I don't have one. But I've got a 29 fret one. I also have a Gary Kramer Turbulence R29, which also has 29 frets. I've got an Edwards, which is like the ESP Japanese brand um, that's got 27 frets. I've got an LTD that's got 27 frets. Really? I never so, knew an LT LTD made a 27 fret. Yeah, they do. It's it's based off of the ESP Horizon model, okay. which has 27 frets. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, they they do have. They've got the 27 fret LTD that comes in like a a trans, like a flame maple trans red, and I think a black with white binding on it. So there's an ad for LTD guitars right there. Yes, um, I play bass, yeah. and uh, I mean I'm not that good, but um, <laughs> I, I everything I own's LTD and ESP. I just I, I love them, you know. Yeah, I, I don't, you know, I don't have an endorsement with them or anything, right. but they they definitely make good products. You know, I've got um, I've got that one. I also have the uh, one of the George Lynch model, uh, like the Kamikaze. You know, it's mm -hmm. like the camo one, yeah. and it, it sounds killer. You know. Well. If you had to take only one guitar with you, only uh, one. Uh, oh man, dude, that's like an impossible question. I mean, okay, <laughs> if I, I've got a, um, I've got a silver Jackson Warrior with black bevels, and it's like a neck through. Um, I'm going to be using that on the Hellion tour. That might be. I might choose that one, or I might choose the. Uh, that Washburn, you know, the 29 fret Washburn, that thing's pretty, pretty awesome too. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. But you ask me tomorrow and I might give you a different answer. Right, right. Yeah. Now, uh, the, as I'll call it, the machine gun guitar. Yes. Yes. What can, uh, yeah. what's the, uh, specifications on that? Well, it, uh, I, I want to be totally honest here. Okay. It's, it's not a good guitar. Okay. It uh, it's a machine gun guitar, which is fantastic. It has a laser mounted to the headstock, which is fantastic. But it goes out of tune very quickly. Like you can play one song, and then it'll be done. You know, and uh, the clip, right, mm -hmm. gets in the way of your high frets. So you're trying to play a solo, and it's like I wish I could I could take the clip out when I do the solo, but it's attached. You know. Right. So um, it's very light though. And uh, considering the shape of the guitar, it's it surprisingly good tone. But, you know, it, it needs a little work. That's, you know, basically what I can say. But, yeah, if I ever wade through a... I wanted to do a cover where I'm, like, wading through the swamp, you know, with, like, holding the machine gun guitar, like, over my head or something. That would be <laughs> sick. That would be real cool. I'd like to see that. Maybe the next album cover? <laughs> That's a good idea, man. I might do it. <laughs> Who does your album or album cover art? Uh, it's it's different, you know. It varies from from album to album. The one I've got 
the Visions of Speed and Thunder album, which is going to be coming out in a few months, is done by uh, this guy in Australia. His his company is called All Things Rotten, and he does a lot of like he does a lot of like black metal bands and that kind of stuff, and um, you know, and some uh, power metal stuff and things like that. Really good, you know, drawn you know artwork, you know, illustration type stuff, and uh, really cool. I can't wait for people to see it. Um, the last one, the last two, the EPs were, were photos, mm, you know, yeah. photo, uh, stuff with some, you know, slightly Photoshop things, you know, for like blood and that kind of stuff, right. you know, for a fact. Uh, but no, they, it, it just varies, you know, depending on if there's a theme on the album and that kind of stuff. So you've been in the business for how long now? Uh, I cut, well, it's, it's tough. I mean. I kind of consider it when I moved to Los Angeles, uh, which was about 2007. Although I was, I, I see I'm from Seattle originally, but I was playing in bands up there too. Mm. So you can go back pretty far, but I, you know, in all honesty, I didn't take it as seriously back then. Right. Um, as a player, I kind of only got as good as I needed to be to play the music that I was playing in the band. I never really pushed myself further than that. Then when I moved down to Los Angeles, I'm like, okay, you know, some of the best players in the world are in Los Angeles. So if I'm going to do anything here, I can't just be mediocre, you know. Right. I've got to like work on my chops and that kind of thing. So I, I started taking it a lot more seriously at that time. So that was about 2007. All right. So in that time, 2007, here we are, seven years later, 2014. Yeah. Um, is there any, uh, uh, like... Any lessons you've learned the hard way, so to speak, that you'd want to share with somebody thinking about moving out to L.A. for a career in music? Um, yeah, well, I mean, I can. there's some stuff I can say about L.A. in particular, like specifically the city. Um, the traffic is terrible, <laughs> you know, and so try to live close to what, you know, whatever it is that you're going to do. Mm. I lived, I used to live in, in the Venice Beach, which is like right on the water, mm -hmm. but there's not a lot of like rehearsal studios or any of that stuff over there. It's a very kind of artistic play, like painting and that kind of stuff. So now I live uh, in like the North Hollywood, like Van Nuys area, which is in the Valley. And, but that area has a lot of the, you know, studios and rehearsal places and things like that. So try to, you know, try to live close to where you're going to be working. Um, the other thing is, when I moved to L.A., I had this very Hollywood kind of idea in my head about what it would be like. And I expected every, everybody to be happy because it's like, yeah, we're in L.A., man. You know, we're going to go to the beach and we're going to make a movie and, you know, this kind of thing. And it's not like that. You know, there's a lot of really stressed out people. It's like, you know, you, I mean, you have like drug problems everywhere. Right. But the thing about L.A. is it's not considered a problem as much in LA. So it's like, yeah, of course the guy's got a Coke problem, but it's not really a Coke problem. He just does Coke, you know, like, it, so it's very different attitudes that people have. And, and I didn't expect that. Um, musically, you know, as far as uh, learning lessons the hard way, I would say just because someone comes highly recommended doesn't mean they're any good. Um, cause sometimes people will recommend their buddies, right. you know, and just because they, you know, they want to throw them some business or something like that, or they're getting a little kickback, you know, they're getting a finder's fee or something like that by recommending them to you. So it doesn't necessarily mean that the person is any good. So like I, um, I worked with like a mastering guy, you know, a mastering engineer who came highly recommended. He's like, Oh, he's worked with all these great people. And it's like, I should have done a little more research because what I would have noticed is he has worked with a lot of great people, but he's only worked with them once. Right. And right. Then, you know, and then they didn't hire him again. And so I ended up wasting, you know, some time and money on this guy and then ha having to have his work redone by someone else later on. And there's just, you know, stuff like that happens. But, um, so yeah, I, I would say that, you know, and, the, the only other thing I can say is that make sure that if, if you're going to do something, you know, if, if you want to be 
I don't care, a musician, an actor, you know, a you know, a scientist or something like that, like you have to want to actually be good at what it is that you do. You can't just want the status or the the idea of being successful. You have to actually want to be skilled at what it is you're doing. And just because I've you know, I've I've met so many people like that. Um, not to stereotype, but especially actors. They don't care about being a good actor or being experienced. They just care about people thinking of them as, oh, wow, that guy's a movie star or something like that, you know. And and those people fail, you know. They don't get to where they want to be. Well, where do you want to be? Like, ten years from now, where do you want to be? Well, there's a lot of stuff with my solo music, you know, things I'm, I'm reaching towards. I'd like to get over to Europe to tour. I'd like, would really like to get into Japan, and I think the music I'm doing would go over very well in Japan. Um, it, it's a really, it's a really great market, but it's really difficult to get into to begin with. So that's something I would really like to get. Um, and I don't think it's going to take ten years. I mean, it's stuff I'm working on now, so hopefully, you know, five or or less. But um, those, you know, those are goals. You know, I. I really genuinely enjoy the stuff I'm doing with Hellion. So I'd like to I'd like to continue uh, you know, being in Hellion and, and writing new material. Um all the new stuff that I've been involved in, the new songs, everybody seems to really dig them and really be excited about them, you know, so I feel good about that. And I think it's a band that you know, it's always kind of been an underground band in some ways. Mm-hmm. And I think you know, a lot more people can learn about that band still and enjoy it, you know. So I'd like to see that happen. Oh, that's um, awesome. Yeah, there you go. There's some stuff. Yeah, that's <laughs> good. Well, I mean, definitely it sounds like you're, you know, very happy with Hellion and very happy with, you know, the opportunities you're getting, you know, with your solo career. But, and this is kind of like a cheesy question, but I just have to ask it just based on your influences. Okay. If you could put together like a dream band, like Living yeah. or Dead, and you're you're one of the two lead guitarists. Okay. Who would be the other guitarist? Who would be the vocalist, bass player, drummer, keyboardist? Like if you could put together your dream band. <clears throat> okay. I would of course be the lead guitarist. Of course. <laughs> uh, there's a um, Czech keyboard player. I- I'm gonna butcher his name, but it's it's um. I believe it's Vitali Kupri, and he is, uh, he's done some killer solo albums. He did some albums with Greg Howe. Uh, he is, most people would know him as the keyboard player in Ring of Fire, which is with like Tony McAlpine and Mark Bowles. I would probably have Mark Bowles as the singer. It would either be Mark Bowles, maybe Eric Adams from Man of War would, you know, Maybe they could trade off for something. I mean, Mark is ridiculous. I mean, he's awesome. I just had a chance to see him sing uh, while he played with Don Dawkin. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. On uh, They did an acoustic uh, show, and my band actually was one of the bands that opened for him. And uh, yeah. just to hear him... To hear him sing with Don, I mean, that just that was an amazing show. It was just... It was good stuff. So yeah. I definitely know where you're coming from with Mark. Yeah, he's done. I mean, so many, so many projects. Even some stuff that's a little bit obscure. That you know, I mean, most people know him from Ingve and, and that kind of stuff. But I mean, his stuff with Ring of Fire. Um, he did a a really. He did an album in like I want to say like ninety three or ninety four that was called like Billionaire Boys Club or something like that. And it's like, it's like you know early nineties hard rock type stuff. But it's just like killer songs, you know, and he sings his ass off, and anyway, okay, enough, enough about my polls, but I could go on for days, anyway, uh, he would probably be the singer, uh, that keyboard player, on drums, I would have Bobby Jarzombek, who's the drummer from Halford's band, okay. he's also done, I mean, he's done, uh, he was in Riot, also, um, he's just, just a killer, killer player, like, just a machine, and really, really good showman, too. He does a thing where he has cymbals behind him. So he'll be playing, and he'll be like, boof, you know, and like, cool. you know, hit the cymbal behind his head and that kind of stuff. 
Uh, okay, bass and the other guitar player. Let me see. Man, that's a tough. That's tough. Um, the guitar is, is like so hard to choose, man. Um, Chris and Pelletieri. Yeah, I would have Chris and Pelletieri. It's kind of an insult to say that he would be the rhythm guitar player, but uh, but <laughs> hey, it's a dream band. Yeah, it's a dream band. No, I'll, I'll let him do a few harmony parts, you know, that guy. Kind of but uh, man, and then on bass, uh, maybe you know Billy, Billy Sheehan. He'd be a great choice. Yeah, Billy's. So, yeah, just don't. I don't know what I would call the band though. I mean, you know, sometimes some of these super groups, I don't really. Chicken Foot. Why, why did they call it Chicken Foot? Yeah, not sure. <laughs> I, I still, I still don't get that. You know? yeah. Must have come out on a heavy night of drinking or something. Because, <laughs> yeah, I, it was probably Sammy Hagar's idea. Yeah, <laughs> but um, so here you are, you know, Hellion again. Great solo stuff going on. Um, if you had to pick one thing that you were the absolutely most proud of in your life, whether it be professionally, musically, whether it be, you know, with the bodybuilding competition whether it be just something personal in life what are you most proud of in your life at this point oh man that's tough <sighs> um geez dude and talk about it on the spot man uh sorry that's <laughs> tough I, I haven't i mean i i don't really think too much about it i i, I feel like you know it hasn't happened yet you know but um I mean, you know, sometimes I, I, I really, I can't pick one and I hate to say that, but sometimes you get these little, you get these little moments where, you know, somebody will come up to you after a show or something like that and say like, Hey man, you know, you know, I, I listened, you know, like, um, there was a guy that I knew a long, long time ago and he, uh, it's, uh, it's a terrible story, but like he had, been involved in a car accident and he fractured a skull and he was in the hospital for a long, long time. And like they had to do a thing where they remove a section of the skull to keep the brain from swelling and this kind of nasty stuff. Right. And I came and I visited him when he was in the hospital, but he was unconscious. So he didn't know I was there. Right. But afterwards people had told him, Oh yeah, you know, Max came to see you and this kind of thing. And so he like, you know, stuff like that. And then he, he, he came to a show. This is, back when I was up in Seattle, he came to a show I played like two years later and I hadn't seen him since this happened, you know? And he's like, hey, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, man, you know, they, they told me you came by the hospital and, you know, and it, it meant so much to me and I found your band CD, you know, and, and I, I listened to the stuff while I was recovering and it helped me so much, you know? And so there, there's things like that. There's little moments where it's like stuff that you, you know, it's like in a way, like the biggest accomplishments are things that you never even intended to do, if that makes any sense. Yeah, sir. You know, because it's like, yeah, it's it's just that kind of thing. It's like one little thing you did at some point ended up having a big effect on, on one person or maybe hopefully a bunch of people in a good way. And you never even intended for that to be the outcome. Right. So that's, you know, I think in a way the best thing just because it's it's the most genuine you know, yeah. but no, as far as, I mean, I'll, I'll, uh, for the official statement, I'll say my biggest accomplishment hasn't come yet. It won't be for a while. All right. Good. Yeah. Good. Look forward to what you got coming out there. Um, that's pretty much what I had for you. Is there anything, this is your chance to, you know, share anything with us, the listeners. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, the big stuff coming up is, uh, Obviously, the Hellion Tour, I'm really looking forward to that. It's U.S. and, and some dates in Canada also. So if anybody, you know, just uh, hellion.us, that's the website, or, you know, go on Facebook and that kind of stuff. Check out the dates if you want to come by. I, I really think anybody who likes metal in any subgenre of metal, you know, it doesn't matter what it is, will like the show, you know, and they'll like the tunes and the band. You know, it's just very, you know, you know, like proto metal, you know, it's like very like, it's just, just metal. And so yeah, check out the tour. Um, 
the Visions of Speed and Thunder thing is going to be coming out in November. Uh, I hope people check that out because that gives a real nice overview of you know my solo stuff. Um, I'll be doing um, I'll be doing a few guest things later on. Probably it's probably going to come out next year. Um, so you know guest solos and that shredding stuff. Uh, so yeah, I guess just stay tuned. You know that kind of thing. And I can't. I'm so glad I remembered this. I'm I'm a member of something called the Planetary Society. Okay. This, I'm to- getting totally off topic here, but this is this is a, basically a uh, an organization that lobbies for more funding for space exploration and things related to it. Nice. And right now, the planet is completely defenseless by asteroid impacts. Okay, this thing that happened in Russia like last year, where the asteroid came down and exploded in the atmosphere, right. and, like blew out all the windows. That was like a small asteroid, right? If we get hit by one of these things, it can, depending on the size of the asteroid, can cause a tsunami, like wipe out the West Coast, that kind of stuff. Can throw dust into the air, block out the sun, all the plants die. Really nasty stuff, and we won't see it coming. And the reason is that we haven't, we haven't even charted, you know, we, we don't know where the, ast- where the orbits are and that kind of stuff. So, please, tell your local congressman and all that stuff to support an asteroid defense program. So we can continue listening to metal. Amen. And Bruce Willis will not be around forever. So that's right. <laughs> so, but no, that's that's cool. Um, you have a lot of interest in astronomy in general, or just I, I do. Yeah, I just like things like I like to see humanity and civilization expanding, you know, and and reaching new horizons and that kind of stuff. And some people feel like. Oh, we got so many problems here on Earth. Let's fix this stuff. But we're always going to have to deal with, you know, people fighting and things like that. I don't think that's ever going to go away completely, you know. And it's just something we have to. It's just part of reality. But I would like to see people, you know, I'd like to see people inventing new technologies and medical breakthroughs and space exploration and all that stuff. I think humanity is capable of a lot more. Have you ever considered a concept album on um, outer space? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Someday it'll happen for sure. I don't know when, but uh, I'm always writing ideas in my head. And that's it's it's full of, there's so many great metal lyrics that you can write about, you know, space and like, you know, black holes and right. being attacked and that kind of stuff. Yeah. It goes on forever. So, Maxwell Karloff, um, like to thank you for joining us here today on Adrenaline101radio.com and the Heavy Metal ICU. And uh, we hope to chat with you again here in the future for your uh, other projects coming up. So thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Absolutely, man. No problem. My pleasure. All right.